in my previous video oh hang on got a smudge in my previous video about magic within the Mithras rule set, I gave you an overview of how the system works. But in this next series of videos, I'm going to look more in depth of with each of the magic disciplines. And where possible, I'm going to ask some of my players how they feel about using or playing magic users within Mithras. My name's Inwills. And welcome to the in crowd. So folk magic is the lowest of the magical disciplines within Mithras. It can be adapted or seen in a variety of ways, but mainly folk magic spells are quick spells which can be cast in an instant that can have in certain situations a real impact on the game. The core rule book on page 121 gives you more information about folk magic and how it can be incorporated into any campaign. So within my, our campaign, the Odes campaign, we have gone for the concept that folk magic are the simple prayers or cantrips of our thesis and sorcerer. So Bartleby, the thesis, um, uses them um, uh, folk magic spells as prayers to buff the other players or to calm wild beasts, while Gulliver, the sorcerer, uses folk magic spells to cause fatigue on the party's opponents or even make their blades rust and fail to slice. So characters use their folk magic skill to cast these spells. Now folk magic is the addition of their power and their charisma score and put together these form this skill that they need to roll in order for a spell to succeed. One tenth of this skill is the starting number of spells that the character will start off with. Although, of course, this can be altered and changed in conversation with your game master during character generation. The types of spells that the characters can learn can also be restricted if desired and you can find a table on the core in the core rule book on page 122 122 that gives you some specific choices of folk magic spells and how they relate to your profession choice of course you can learn new spells as the campaign progresses it requires three experience roles to learn a new magic spell and there also has to be a trainer involved and some exchange of money now although this might differ due to the magic richness of the campaign a general base cost is about 100 silver pieces now players in orders um, and if you haven't seen my video about orders and brotherhood then the link will be up here somewhere um, all players within orders might have or receive a reduced cost or there might only be certain spells that can be taught through the order now if a player wants a specific spell then maybe this could be used as a focus of an adventure or some downtown downtime quests for the party or the player to be involved in. Now, before I tell you how to use actual folk magic spells, can I please remind you that also on this channel, as well as my rules videos, there's also some actual play videos when you can see the party and myself venturing through the ODES campaign. And if you are willing and wanting more Mithras content then don't forget there's also a monthly podcast that just started a couple of months called called Mithras Matters and on here you can hear interviews from some of the creators and have reviews about some of the supplements that are be available within the Mithras family 
Also, as well as liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel, I have now got a Patreon page set up for anyone who would like to provide some monetary support. There's a range of levels that you can um, engage with, all with suitable benefits. So please take the moment to check them out. The link for the podcast and my patron page are down in the comments below. Now, back to the main feature. So you have your folk magic spells all learnt and now you're ready to cast them in a combat or throughout the adventure. So how do you do that? Well, in order to successfully cast a folk magic spell, you just roll your folk magic skill. And a success, a standard success, means that the spell was successful and it was cast. Boom, there it goes. Now spells um, folk magic spells are fueled by your magic points and each spell uses a standard cost of one magic point but this can differ according to the difficulty grade or the success of your skill roll so if you get a critical roll when you roll your folk magic skill that this means that the spell was a success and no magic points were used that's a positive. If it's a standard roll, then you are successful and you cost one, you lose one magic point to fuel the spell. If you fail your roll, then the spell does not work, i.e. the spell effect does not come up off, but you do use up a magic point. Mm. And then finally, if you fumble with your folk magic roll, then the spell doesn't work and you will lose 1d3 magic points. So that's just rolled randomly and off it goes. Now, due to the simple nature of the folk magic spells, each spell has an intensity, the level of the effect of the spell of one, and a magnitude, how difficult the spell can be dispelled, also of one. So both intensity and magnitude one. Folk magic spells are very quick to cast and they take just one turn so just one action point and one turn some have special durations which can be found in the specific spell descriptions for example glamour but most spell cast magic folk magic spells sorry are instant cast and instant effect some do require concentration and if it requires concentration then the caster must be free of all physical and mental distraction any such disturbances interrupts the concentration and the spell will cease. Now, in the spell description, there will also be some information about whether or not the spell can be cast as range and its resist. So if a spell can be cast at range, then this is calculated by using the folk magic skill in meters. Now, if the opponent cannot be seen, then the difficulty of the spell increases by one. So for example, if you know that there's somebody hiding behind a door, you know that they're there but you can't see them, then instead of the difficulty being a standard roll, then it will be a hard roll. If there's no range specified, then the user of the folk magic spell has to physically touch the recipient. And finally, resist. Now with all magic, the opponents or the recipient of the spell can resist the spell. The resist roll can be done in one of three ways, evade, willpower or endurance. This is an, an opposed test and if you need more information about opposed roles then I've created a video about them up here. My script is just saying point up now. Now if it's an evade roll that is needed to resist, then the opponent must have an available action point to get out the way. And failure means that they will get hit by the spell and they will land prone, unlucky. If it's willpower or endurance, then no skill point, uh, action point is needed for that resist, resist, but it's still an opposed roll. And that's it. So let's see some folk magic in action from the recent epic battle from the Odes campaign where the party were battling against the Zuktug. Here we go. Okay, um, 
so Gulliver, um, the first thing he's going to do from atop his perch on these rocks, seeing that combat has been initiated, pointing his fingers with the two fingers crossed at the um, at this big zuktuk, whatever it is. Um, you hear him say, "Emmet." as he casts a spell. The spell that he is going to cast is one of his cantrips, and it is this spell. Okay, so Gulliver will roll his folk magic um, skill spell. Um, magic in this game is fueled by magic points rather than um, levels as in D&D, &D. yeah. And I will use my first point of love. <laughs> In the first two actions, we've had two points of um, To reverse those, given the 49, you are allowed uh, a resist roll on your endurance, which you will make. Um, right, endurance, um, which is um, that roll. Um, hang on, um, where's, uh, there's my skill roll. Uh, my endurance is that. Um, yes, he he certainly does make it. Um, he his skill his endurance is sixty six and his dice roll was thirty seven. Which uh, would if it's an opposed roll? Oh no, yes, no. It yeah. means you will win, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. it's an opposed roll. Well done. Um, so therefore, I gain one point of um, fatigue, uh, one level of fatigue. And now, although the weakest form of magic in Mithras, folk magic is not to be overlooked. The spells generally have a few restrictions, but they will allow the players to consider how they're going to use the spell in various situations. Initially, they might not seem very powerful, the folk magic spells, but they can really change the, the flow of the combat. And when I'm GMing, I always try to relate back to the party the possible impact of the spell for example if the spell has increased the hardness of a, a difficulty roll to from standard to hard and the opponent fails i will say something like this fails due to the effects of the spell or the sword hits but the damage is absorbed by the protection spell or less damage is done because of the dull blade this really usually results in players voicing their thanks to the spellcasters and the spellcasters producing a rather big beaming smile. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at the the thesis spells, the cleric spells, if I can say the word, when I will be joined by the infamous, infamous Mr. Pickles, who plays Bartleby Fumus, the thesis of Amriel in our campaign. Until then, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. Do keep an eye out for the Mithras Matters podcast, which is currently in production for next month. Um, this comes out on the first of every month, so it's well worth subscribing if you are either a dedicator, dedicated user of the Mithras rule set or just starting out. But until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and you gain a well-deserved special. Until then, happy Mithrasing everyone, and I will catch you all later. Bye!